November the 9th, uh, in the year of our fetus, 2011, and I'm on... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the phone with my friend Chris Rada, who uh, is with the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. She uh, is a featured writer at at uh, Huffington Post, Free Thought Blogs, etc. We want to talk about theocracy a little bit. And the reason I introduced the year that we're pre-recording as the year of our fetus is just this ridiculous obsession um, about fetuses being people when they're zygotes and um, to me this all blends into a theocracy I mean last Christmas we saw pictures of fetuses with halos above them and all this other nonsense and so Chris um, thank you so much for joining me on this on this pre-record of the show how are you doing good thanks for having me on well, wonderful. So, Chris, um, maybe your thought on the year of our fetus, and then also you, what is it? You heard my thought on our year of the fetus <laughs> as you were introducing it. I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, do, you, do you think it kind of ties a little bit in with this uh, the notion of a theocracy? Oh, all of this stuff ties into each other. There's no separating any of it. Um, it's just a, you know... Uh, all part of the biblical worldview. Cindy Jacobs ha and all of the people that we generally associate with the uh, New pa Apostolic Reformation Movement, the Dominionists, all those people, had this big Re Reformation Day on October 31st. And one of the things that I noticed that they were saying all the way through was they kept trying to say, well, just because we want to take over the seven mountains does not mean we want a theocracy. And I think a lot of people don't understand what a theocracy is. And the last time you and I talked about this, I thought that your definition was brilliant. So can you uh, kind of share what a theocracy is? Sure. Hopefully I'll do it as brilliantly as I did before. Um, I think people complicate it. Uh, the definition is simpler than people realize. It's very simple. It's a government where the laws are based on a religious text or a or religious belief. So all of these laws, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, gay marriage or abortion or uh, they're even bringing it into economic stuff now and, and whatever, that they want the laws based on the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. That is the very definition of a theocracy when a religious text is what the laws are based on. Well, it's, exactly, it, yeah. and it doesn't matter, and I think that this is where people get this mixed up. They think, oh, no, a theocracy means that the Catholic Church, they're usually identified as the big Yeah, they'll all be running time. around in burkas or something that right. extreme. It's not, you know, you have to apply the word to the say that you know yeah if you have the majority religion in a country is muslim mm -hmm. and they're you know uh, uh you know very orthodox about their religious beliefs and you have the taliban in rule okay yes one of their things is going to be all the women have to wear burqas people think that's so completely removed from our country nothing like that could happen here it doesn't have to be something that uh, visible, mm -hmm. like people walking around in Bill Mark calls them beekeeper suits. Okay, that um, for in our country where the majority of people are Christian, but you have this group of dominionists who want uh, want a theocracy. People don't see it as a, being as threatening. Because it's not mm -hmm. as visible. Exactly. You know, people aren't going to be required to walk around wearing crosses around their neck. You know, but meanwhile, laws are being passed or proposed or whatever where that are based on nothing but religious beliefs. You hear the term Christian nation as it's being but, used these days. Does, does that equate to a theocracy with you? Yes. Yeah, it does to me too. And and uh, I was listening to one of these uh, reclaiming Oklahoma or yeah, well, yeah, anything that's got reclaiming I, or restoring immediately is that's they're all the organizations doing this stuff. 
Right, and then when, they, when they're trying to convince people of this, they keep saying, oh, no, we're not a theocracy. We don't want a theocracy. But right. yet, it, it, it just, when you go right back to the definition that you gave, if you're yeah. using the Bible as the basis for your law, it is a theocracy. Yeah. Well, look, you have David Barton right now going out. He's doing the, um, it's called United in Purpose. Uh, everybody just look for this group online. You'll see what it is. Very well funded, uh, based in California, running these events all over the country and um, uh, these home house party things that are going on where you sign up to be a champion to champion the vote. Their goal is to register 5 million uh, Christian, evangelical, fundamentalist Christian voters to sway elections, and they are organized. When we take a look at the broad stripes and the bright stars on our American flag, we are reminded that our country has been through a perilous fight. When we take a look at the cross, we are reminded that our God sent His Son to die for us all. If you're a Christian and you're an American, you find yourself doing your best to honor both the cross and the flag. On November 6, 2012, we will have the opportunity to decide who runs our United States of America. It's estimated that there are over 60 million Christians in the U.S., and only about 30 million of them vote in any given election. That tells us that roughly half of the Christians in this country do not realize the power and influence they hold in one single vote. Do we really have an influence, you say? Well, let's take a look. For example, the Show Me State of Missouri. In 2008, the voting margin between the two main candidates was a mere 3,903 votes, Want to guess how many unregistered Christians reside in Missouri? Approximately 102,522. Let's head out east to the Tar Heel state of North Carolina. Their voting margin was only 14,177 votes. Unregistered Christians there, about 281,212. So here's the deal. We've researched 21 states and have concluded that getting 5 million new registered Christians would decide an election. So how will we get that many new people to vote? Um, you. It all starts with Y-O-U. And then we want you to use your influence in your community to champion other Christians to vote. It's a grassroots movement. We want you to join at championthevote.com. It's your community. You have the influence. You are the champion. You are the movement. Sign up at www.championthevote.com. One of their resources that you download on can download online. First, let me get back to David Barton real quick before I read this thing, which is the uh, true definition of theocracy right here. Uh, David Barton is part of this, and in his recent presentations, his presentations for United with Purpose, and on the, his presentation on the DVD for the house parties that everyone, church events that everyone's doing across the country this weekend, he goes through this whole thing of which Bible verses to use for all of the current issues. Now, we're not just talking the two biggies, abortion and gay marriage. We're talking all the economic issues. He's got, uh, he twists Bible verses to that Jesus would have opposed the minimum wage um, and uh, uh, everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, he's got uh, the, 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 he uses the parable with the, uh, the, um, a guy who owns a vineyard and goes out and gets workers and uh, one works a whole day, the other works half a day and blah, 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 but they all get paid the same. Somehow this translates to him into Jesus would oppose the minimum wage. I just think it, it says that Jesus is in favor of going out and picking up illegals to do farm work. But um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, but they're serious. I mean, I'm joking about it, but they're serious. They have a Bible verse. Uh, this, he's got this crazy thing from Isaiah where, you know, God is the, uh, um, the, the king, the judge, and the lawgiver, whatever that thing. That is where our uh, three branches of government come from and separation of powers. And don't you love how he ignores, you know, the other verses that you could cherry pick from the Bible that says, you know, that God appoints the monarch and mm -hmm. you have no right to challenge right. that. Right. So, um, so anyway, we'll go back with, with theocracy. Uh, I just happen to have here because I'm doing this uh, United in Purpose champion the vote thing. One of their resources that you download when you're doing this is titled "Developing a Biblical Worldview." 
Okay. Now this is the thing. Remember, keep on. This is the thing about registering voters. Right. Okay? Right. And they have. It's a two-page thing. The second page of it is called the Worldview Comparison Chart, and it compares people with a biblical worldview to a naturalism, atheist worldview in each of the areas that affect how people should vote. Okay? Uh-huh. So for government, they, for the biblical worldview, it says government ordained by God, allowed by God, under God's authority. Now, for atheist and naturalistic worldview, it says, many view government systems as solutions to man's problems. So it's the, okay, this, this is what we're talking about. This is, this is the theocracy, that the laws should be based on God. They have solutions, like, as to, solutions to, like, all problems. This is a general thing. The, the, the heading is solution. Okay, uh-huh. that for people with a biblical worldview, it will always be spiritual. For people with a naturalism, atheistic worldview, it says many ways government intervention, more education, technological developments, and removal of religion. So this <sighs> is these are the people. Biblical worldview means uh. the same as. Seven Mountains, the same as theocracy, the same as Christian nationalism. They're all different terms. Anytime you see in the name of an organization, restoring or reclaiming. But a lot of Christians don't read the Bible, and they tend to look at it as, you know, the best of the humanistic principles. You treat mm-hmm. each other like you would treat yourself. Right. You know, all of these really good things. And they think that that is Christian without actually sitting down, reading the Bible, finding out what these biblical worldviews are, looking up what David Barton says to find out what the actual scripture is that goes along with it and the context. And so I think that they get kind of swept up into this type of thing, thinking, oh, we're promoting this really wonderful Jesus heals everybody, you know, everything is love and love and and light and, and... transcendence over our problems and I don't think they realize the kind of the dark side of this whole thing and this is what the personhood of vote in Mississippi I think sort of brought to the you know to everybody's attention you can use these nice little simple sayings and uh, you know life begins at conception but there's always a dark side there's always this other stuff that comes along with it Right. And um, have have you been seeing a lot of that kind of weird stuff going on in the these DVDs that you've reviewed so far? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it. You know, you watch them, and you know, there's so many people that they just they would make sense to. This is the scary thing, where you know, people say, "Oh, that's nice." You know, like these people that are going to have all these house parties across the country this weekend with these things are going to watch this thing, and these people sound rational. They don't sound like nuts, mm-hmm. and that's the um, uh, you know they they have have this air of authority, and they know what they're talking about, and. Um, you know, David Barton starts rattling off all these Bible verses to deal with every possible, and he, re- he literally says that there is no problem in our government now that can't be solved by instituting a biblical principle. And strikingly, if you look through that document, it is amazing how many biblical clauses appear in constitutional clauses. Biblical verses and phrases, you'll find them through so many concepts. The Founding Fathers pointed to Bible verses as the source of those concepts. See, today we're told, oh no, government's secular. That's that compartmentalization again. They never believed it was secular. They looked to God to be included in everything they did, and that's where so many of those great ideas came from, was right out of the scriptures. So their, one of their last events was that event back in March, the one where um, uh, Mike Huckabee was speaking at it and, uh, yeah, and the faith, said that Bar- and everyone should be forced to listen to uh, Barton at gunpoint. Right, because this is, yeah, I remember that. That was just unbelievable. Yeah, Newt Gingrich is also in these. and Oh, and uh, Sammy, uh, what's his face, Sammy Rodriguez? Rodriguez. Yeah, yes. he's in this too. And, um, he quits uh, the Oak Initiative because it's too extreme, but yet he's still uh, running around doing the exact same thing. Oh, I'm yeah, 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 Rodriguez. just, through, just yeah. through a group that doesn't seem as extreme.
Exactly. On the surface, but I mean, I mean, all you got to do is read this this thing that I just read from this, uh, you know, developing a biblical worldview. That this is one of their main resources for this big rec- voter recruiting drive. Um, they're what they're doing is getting, I think it's a hundred thousand champions to champion the vote to each register fifty people to vote across the country to add up to what they've determined they need is 5 million more evangelical Christian voters to sway the elections they need to sway. They know people think that word theocracy sounds so extreme that people won't really believe it. And now, well, you see how they're dismissing the term dominionist and making jokes about it. I'm a dominionist. They say I'm a dominionist. You know, oh, because I, you know, believe in this or that. I'm a dominionist. And you see that you hear this on them mocking the term dominionist mm-hmm. on across all the the big uh, religious talk shows now and and uh, and in articles and stuff like that because that's a term that the reason people on our side are using it and that it's a good term to use is because it really describes exactly what they are. They are they want dominion over exactly. all areas of society, the seven mountains or whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, you know, I mean, basically it's all the, the seven mountains, just, you know, not everybody calls it that. It's all the same thing. It's dominion over every area whether it's media or or government or education and you know um whatever the other business what all the other mountains mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um uh yeah so so to call them dominionists that's a term that does is starting to be picked up by more mainstream uh, uh news outlets CNN has used it now and others because and it's a term that people can wrap their minds around right. it dominion they dominionists they want dominion over us you know exactly. and so now the all the religious right people all the dominionists have to now try to poo poo that term and joke about it because well, obviously it is causing them doing. a problem I sat there and uh, listened to one of the, I mean, it was like half an hour, and I transcribed the whole thing and put it on the Internet about what they were saying, like, right after this. And so now they're saying, oh, you know, by dominion, we actually mean influence. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Like, like it's a little more benign, and it's well, not. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They're, 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 toning, they're, they're, they're toning it down and making it sound like, you know, it's like someone saying, I say, I'm going to kill you. And then it's like, well, no, I'm just going to, I don't know, break your fingernail. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's like, like tone it down. Like, oh, it's just an expression. Oh, it means something different. Oh, it, you know, and, and it's like, no, it means what it means. Dominionist. They want dominion. Theocracy is bad.